Well, today what we are doing is going over the most missed questions from the practice test multiple choice no calculator. So starting with seven, I realize I have to take an integral of an integrand, and this is not one that I have memorized. So therefore, I'm going to use u substitution. So if I let u be the square root of x, which can also be written as x to the one half, makes it easier to take the derivative of, I get one half x to the negative one half dx. Let's clean that up a little bit. So it's 1 over 2 square root of x dx. Now, if I look back at the original integrand, notice I just want it to be 1 square root of x, not 1 half. So if I multiply both sides by 2, I get 2 du equals 1 over the square root of x dx. So now using this fact and this fact, I can make a substitution. So it would be the integral of u, which is the square root of Oh, no, e to the u, thank you very much, would be um, replace the numerator, and then the denominator is replaced by 2 times du. So I'll bring the coefficient to the front, e to the u, du, and we know that the antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u. So I get 2 e to the u plus c, and then replace u with the square root of x. So 2 e to the square root of x plus c. So the answer is a. Next problem, please is number 12. So, a number 12, I am given the derivative, and then I'm given a value of the function f. And I need to find the value of the function e, okay? So, knowing this then, um, let's see, what am I going to do on this problem? So, for this problem, I'm going to use a fundamental theorem. Because when I take the integral of a derivative, it is the function. And I'm looking at the x values, square root of e to e. Well, the square root of e will be smaller than e, and so this would equal f to the e minus f to the square root of e, okay? So using my fundamental theorem there. Now I'm going to replace f prime of x with 2 times 1 over x, so I'll bring the coefficient to the front, square root of e over e, and then this is 1 over x, okay, equals f to the e, which is my unknown, minus 5. That's given in the problem. Now, take the antiderivative, so I have 2 to the natural log of x, evaluated from e to the square root of e, okay, brackets, is equal to f of e minus 5. And now I'm going to continue evaluating this problem. So we have the natural log of e minus the natural log of the square root of e, okay, which the natural log of e is 1, and the natural log of e to the 1 half is 1 half. So 1 minus 1 half is a half, and a half of 2 is 1. So 1 equals f of e minus 5. So I add 5, so then the value is 6 for f of e. And is there a 6? There is. It is letter D. Woohoo! Okay, the next problem is number 13. Now, number 13, when I do this problem, you're going to go, oh, okay, because I have, I have to evaluate x cubed plus 1 squared dx. Now, this is not one that I have memorized, and I can't use the power, I mean, the u substitution, because there are not two factors that are the derivative of another. However, if I use my algebra skills and I multiply the binomial, then I can use the power rule. Because so when I multiply this, I get x to the 6 plus 2x cubed plus 1 dx. And now I can just use the power rule. So I add 1, I get x to the 7th divided by 7. Add 1, I get x to the 4th, and when I divide by 4, 2 fourths is 1 half. And this would be x plus c. Don't you love it, folks? The answer is b. Next problem. Okay, now when I look at this problem, something should jump out at you. And you should say, definition of derivative. That's what I say. Is that what you say? Because when I look at this, I recognize the definition of derivative where f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So in this function then, f of x is e to the x, okay? Because when I look here, we don't want a constant to be my function, but the function is e to the x where x has a value of 2. So if I take the derivative of this function, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and then I replace it, find that derivative at 2, the answer is e squared, which is d. 
Okay, moving right along. 23, let me flip over my page here. So we are given an f of x function, okay? And we are told that it's an even function. Oh yes, love this one. We're four line segments. So which of the following statements below is false? Oh, these kill me. Well, when I look at this problem, immediately I see some similarities between like three of them, huh? B, D, and E. Do you notice how the setup of those are very similar? All three of those are the definition of a derivative, where you're looking at the derivative at a specific point A, so it's f of x minus f of A all over x minus A, okay? So like f, I'm wanting to find out what is the derivative, basically, at x equals 3. So when I look at 3, here's the point 3, you notice it's a corner. What is the derivative at a corner? The derivative does not exist, d and e. So actually, this statement here is true, so it will not be the answer. Now d is asking the derivative at x equals 2. So when I look at x equals 2, now that's a linear segment. So what's the slope of that line? It looks like it's going up 1 over 1, so the slope is 1. And that's what they put. So this one is also true, so that's not going to be the answer. B, it says the derivative when x is 0, they're saying the derivative is 0. But when I look at 0, I notice I have a corner. So the derivative does not exist. So this is my false statement. The answer would be B. Now, um, if I look at A and C, A is not the definition of derivative. This is actually looking at, okay, so when I approach the value 0 of f of x minus f of 0, well, what is f of 0? Well, I look at my graph, f of 0 is 0. So what is the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x, right? Because f of 0 is just 0. So what is the limit as I approach it from the right and the left? The right and the left, the limit is 0. So see, that is true. And c is talking about a secant line. When I look at the slope of a secant line, so I have a secant line at where the y values are at x and negative x. So let's say I'm looking at 4 and negative 4. So here is my y value at 4, so this would be f of 4, and here is my y value at negative 4, f of negative 4. So if I subtract the y values, so the change in y, over the change in the x values, so I'm looking at the slope. What do you notice about the slope between those two points? Since it's an even function, the slope will always be 0, which is what I have here. So b was the answer for this problem. Okay, number 27. Number 27, this is just reminding you of the fundamental theorem, the derivative part. Because if you take the derivative of an integral, basically integrals and derivatives are inverse functions. Um, if I take the derivative, though, it is going to be the integrand evaluated at its limits. So the formal definition is we would um, then substitute 2x into the function. So I'm going to have 2x squared minus 2x and then do you remember, you multiply by the derivative of the limit, which would be times 2. Now, technically, we also do the same thing with 4. We would go 4 squared minus 4 and then multiply it by the derivative of the limit. Well, the derivative of 4 is just 0. So this just makes a big fat 0. That's why I never include it. So now I have 2 times the square root of 4x squared minus 2x. And I'm wanting to find the derivative at 2. So it's the square root of 4 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2, and when I do the work, I get 2 radical 12. The answer is E. Um, and I think that might be my last question. Let me just double check. Okay, that's the last one I'm just going to do. But if you had a question on 15, you get a bonus here. Okay, I know. So we are told y at 0 is equal to 1. So when x is 0, y is 1, right here. And using the slope field, we have to decide which of these would be the differential equation. Well, when I draw in the function, it looks like it's going like that, right? Would you guys agree? Okay. So, using my knowledge of functions, cosine would not fit because cosine goes like this, right? So that is not a solution. And we know x squared, that's a quadratic opening down. Well, that kind of looks, except for a quadratic, the end behavior is different. e to the x, we know goes like that. That is definitely not e to the x. Square root of 1 minus x squared. Well, square root function typically will look something like this. 
and we would only have it where the x, the radicand has to be positive, okay? But even if I put negative, it still get positives. So my valid solution is here, E. Now look, something else that gives me a clue. Because notice the horizontal asymptote of this graph looks like it's at um, y equals 1, right? So horizontal asymptote, as I'm approaching infinity, remember you look at the fraction and look at the degree. The degree is greatest in the denominator. So that means that I am approaching 0. So my, oops, maybe I was wrong. The horizontal asymptote is approaching 0 because there's still a little bit of curve here. Sorry about that, folks. So then that, E, is the solution. Great. Hope you guys have a great weekend. See you coming up on Monday.